Ogilvy by Ewan O'Leary In front of a sparkling lake, with mountains, waterfalls, and trees on the horizon, and a bright blue sky speckled with clouds above, a large gold ring appears, lined with blue stars. A red and white striped banner flutters at the bottom of the ring, with Sonic the Hedgehog lettered in the center. Sonic emerges from the mysterious black void within the ring, and pauses above the banner for a moment to look down the camera and waggle his finger sassily. Sonic looks down below. He glances back up at the camera once more with a smirk before leaping down. The camera follows as he lands on the grass below, and begins to run through Green Hill Zone, an obstacle course of loops, springs, and badnik robots determined to kill him. Hey there, I'm Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, but I bet you already figured that out, didn't you? We follow Sonic as he speeds through the obstacles, dispatching badniks and bouncing from wall to wall. I'm on my way over to foil whatever scheme roll buttniks thrown together. I know, Mondays, right? Tails appears, flying alongside Sonic. Hey, Sonic! Tails, what's on the itinerary? Robotnik's trying to open up a portal to a special zone so he can get his hands on the Chaos Emeralds. He needs 50 rings to open it. How many does he have now? 49. Well, I guess I'd better hurry, huh, little bro? You know it, Sonic. He speeds off, leaving Tails far behind to catch up. Now, if you're new here, you might be asking, what's a Chaos Emerald? What's a special zone? Why am I being assaulted with MacGuffins in the first five minutes? You don't really have to worry about it. There are special gemstones with some ancient power that exist in little pocket dimensions, and a mad scientist who looks like Teddy Roosevelt wants to steal them all so he can rule the world. But I'm the anthropomorphic blue hedgehog who runs fast and is going to stop it. We good? Good. Let's get going, then. Sonic approaches the end of the path. Dr. Robotnik can be seen in his flying eggmobile. As he starts talking, Robotnik doesn't sound like you would expect. Ah, Sonic. I'm so glad you could join us. We're going to have a ball. As he says this, Robotnik presses a button on his control panel, releasing a wrecking ball from the bottom of the eggmobile. It lands below with a smash, breaking the ground. As it raises up again, Sonic can be seen running towards it. Was that a pun? That's the worst of your crimes against humanity yet, Robotnik. Or is it crimes against unhumanity? Crimes against animals? That's not as catchy. Sonic runs past the signpost, indicating the end of the level. The momentum spins it around, launching it out of the ground. Sonic reaches the Eggmobile and jumps into the air, landing his feet on the wrecking ball. He launches off of it backwards, performing a backflip towards the signpost, which is still spinning midair, and catches it. Sonic homing attacks forward again, and in a dramatic finish, hits Robotnik with the signpost, knocking him out of the Eggmobile. Robotnik face plants into the ground, as Sonic lands behind him, planting the signpost back into the grass. The Eggmobile crashes to the ground behind him and bursts into flames. Ka-ka-ing! Ow. Well, would you look at that! The hero triumphed over the villain. What a surprise. Shut up. Are you gonna come quietly? I mean, we don't have a prison here because we're, you know, animals. <laughs> Shut up. Robotnik is beginning to stir now, reaching for something off screen. It's a pretty small minority of us to talk, actually. I don't think Flicky or Cucky or any of the others would care that much about how you're punished. Shut up! Robotnik pulls a black handgun and shoots Sonic in the head, launching him back and scattering rings across the ground. The crack of the pistol echoes. Having just arrived, horrified, Tails looks back and forth between Sonic, lying lifeless on the ground, and Robotnik. Where the hell did you get a gun? From a gun store. Robotnik reaches down and grabs one of the rings, which disappears in his hand. He looks up to see a giant gold ring materialize above them, the inside of which is fluctuating like a pool of rippling liquid. Yes! The special zone is open! Finally! The Chaos Emeralds are all- ah! Sonic steps on Robotnik's head, jumping up towards the ring. Too slow! No! Curse you, Hedgehog. It's like I always say, Butnik. Sonic, still flying towards the ring, has now turned to face Robotnik falling backwards into it with his hands behind his head. 
You gotta go! Sonic disappears into the ring before he finishes his sentence. The ring shrinks into itself and poofs out of existence. Tails stares on in disbelief. Well, he's dead. Sonic falls through an endless, empty black void. He face plants into the invisible floor. After a pause, he lifts his face and coughs a few times. <coughs> Fast! Sonic looks around. He doesn't see anything. Well, this is new. He stands up, dusts himself off, and tries kicking the ground, but there's nothing to kick. <laughs> Not a chilly dog in sight. Despicable. Well, best get moving. Sonic spins his feet in a figure eight, then peels out. He runs around the emptiness. He swerves left and right. He's circling. He's zigzagging. Eventually, he slows to a halt and plants his hands on his knees, having exhausted himself. Ah, <sighs> juice. Why have I always got to slow down right after the fun part? This is worse than the marble zone. He straightens up, looking into the distance. He squints into the darkness. He inhales deeply and sits down and wraps his arms around his knees. <sighs> Green Hill Zone, Sunset. Tails is curled up, mirroring Sonic in the previous shot. He's sat on the grass, next to the crater from the wrecking ball, the signpost, emblazoned with a cheerful Sonic holding up a peace sign, and the wreckage of the Eggmobile. He's quietly crying. Slowly, he tilts his head up. Sonic looks up as well, screen right of where Tails was and facing towards him. He slowly stands up. Tails gets up, sniffling, and begins walking right. Sonic walks left. He stops. Tails stops. We see his face closer. He closes his eyes and turns his head, listening. We hear him breathing through his nose. He's breathing in quickly and holding his breath, desperate to hear what he's listening for. We cut back but Sonic isn't in shot. The camera pans over to Sonic, standing further back, having walked away. Ugh, this is so boring! He spin dashes, but for not. I just need something to happen. Anything, please! I'm going crazy! I'm waiting! An elderly-sounding voice echoes from the distance. Hello? Sonic immediately speeds over. He comes to a stop with a smile on his face, which quickly fades as he looks down at the source of the voice. He's shocked and confused. Oh, well, that figures. I wait all this time for some company. Who else would I get? You're not... Sitting on the ground in front of Sonic is... Sonic. An older, worn Sonic, with a wrinkled face, scrawny torso, and a long, gray beard. It sure looks that way. Strange, isn't it? When did you get here? Well, I got the drop on old Butnik and hopped into that giant ring, hoping I'd find an emerald in here. I can't tell you how long ago that was, since there aren't really days and nights anymore. But I think it's been a while. The beard usually means it's been a while, right? Sonic doesn't answer. So, how long have you been here, then? I... I don't know, actually. <laughs> Get used to that. Hey, uh, before I forget, could you do me a favor? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Would you kill me? What? Please, it's been so long. I gave up on going home years ago. I just need this to be over. No, no! I, I'm not gonna kill you, geezer. Please! No one will know. Just put me out of my misery. I'm begging you! Sonic walks away disgusted. The old Sonic watches him. After a pause, he starts laughing. A cold, bitter laugh that escalates to an unhinged cackle. As Sonic's walking away, he hears the old Sonic suddenly stop laughing. He falters and turns around. Look, this is seriously screwed. He stops. The old Sonic is enveloped in a green light, emanating from what has appeared in front of him, a Chaos Emerald. No. 
Fixated, Sonic walks towards it. No! The old Sonic grabs it and shields it in his arms. It's mine! I didn't wait all this time for you to waltz in here and take it from me! Sonic stops. I... I have to go home, man. You can't have it! Please, just hand it over. Bite me, babyface! This one's mine! Sonic hesitates. His arms fall to his sides. <sighs> All right. Keep it. All right! Good. I'm glad! What are you going to do with it? I'm going to go home! And how's that working out for you? Shut up! An extended one-take shot begins with the two Sonics in frame. Sonic slowly walks a few feet away, then sits down facing away from the old Sonic and crosses his arms. The old Sonic holds the emerald up to his eyes to examine it closer. He holds it to his ear and knocks on it twice. He tries shaking it. All right, I want to go home now, you hear? I'm waiting! Come on! He whacks the emerald against the ground a few times. Shazam! Chaos Control! There's no place like home! He feebly clicks his heels together. Our Sonic tries to ignore him. He looks off into the distance, tapping his foot. Want me to try? No! You can have it when I die of old age! For a full, on-screen, excruciating 60 seconds, Sonic sits in silence, occasionally tapping his toe, while the old Sonic holds the emerald in his arms, protecting it. He sporadically tries new ways to activate the emerald as they occur to him, like holding it up in the air, trying again a few times in a row, as if it'll work if he does it ever so slightly differently, or rubbing it like a genie lamp. He examines every inch of the emerald, rotating it in his hands. We finally cut to a close-up of our Sonic, who's looking into the distance. Tails, curled up and still crying, stares back where Sonic's eyeline was. Sonic turns to the old Sonic, after a few seconds, our Sonic gets up slowly and walks towards him with reluctant purpose. The old Sonic, who was in the middle of trying in vain to fit the emerald into his mouth, takes it out and holds it close to his chest. What are you doing? I said you can't have it! You can't take- Sonic holds his hand over the old Sonic's mouth and nose, smothering him. The old Sonic flails desperately, dropping the emerald at his feet. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. The old Sonic bites Sonic's hand, <coughs> briefly releasing his grip. Way past cruel, man! Sonic grabs his mouth again, this time more forcefully, so he doesn't lose his grip again. With his free left hand, Sonic tries to reach down to the emerald on the ground. As he strains his left arm, reaching down, he, unintentionally, pulls the old Sonic's face to the right. The old Sonic is still struggling. Until suddenly, as Sonic's left hand reaches the emerald, we hear a snap as he pulls the old Sonic's head too far. Ah, shit! No! Sonic releases his grip and steps back. The old Sonic tumbles to the floor, completely lifeless, eyes wide. Sonic stares down in disbelief. <laughs> Startling him, a jarringly cheerful jingle plays as text appears above his head, reading, Sonic got a Chaos Emerald. Sonic holds the back of his head in his hands, still clutching the emerald in his right. What have I done? Behind him, another ring portal appears. He looks over at it and pauses, overwhelmed by shock. After looking down at the body, he slowly begins walking in the direction of the portal. Gradually, he builds up momentum and starts running though it's clear he's having more difficulty working up the motivation than before. When he nears the portal, he closes his eyes, jumping in. <laughs> Asleep against a window, Sonic slowly wakes up. Outside it's snowing as a city street passes by the window. He's on a bus. Despite the weather, the bus is clean and picturesque. Whoa. Where am I? Hey, babe. You look so peaceful. I didn't want to wake you. Sonic looks over. Sitting beside him is Super Mario. They're holding hands. They're sharing earbuds, which are plugged into a CD player sat between them. Sonic stares at Mario, confused. 
Mario frowns with concern. You okay, huh? Yeah. Just... tired. Bad dream? Sonic flashes an unsure smirk. <laughs> Something like that. He looks down awkwardly before looking back up into Mario's eyes. Mario smiles back warmly. Is this real? Was it really just a dream? He looks down at his hand in Mario's. Maybe it was. Maybe it was all just one long dream. All of it. And now... I'm awake. Mario rests his head on Sonic's shoulder. Sonic looks unsure at first, but resting his head on Mario's and putting his arm around him, he smiles with relief. Mario runs through the entrance of a grocery store playfully while Sonic walks over to pick up a basket. Let's have a feast tonight. What do you want? Uh, chili dogs? We had chili dogs last night, Spikes. We did? And the night before that. And on Monday. And Sunday. And... I like chili dogs. All right, all right. We'll get you your chili dogs. But when you get fat, I get to nuzzle your belly. <laughs> Deal. They walk down an aisle. Mario pulls down a can of chili and a box of spaghetti, dropping them into Sonic's basket. I'm gonna go grab us some cheap old grocery store wine. You get the hot dog and meatballs. Yes, sir! At these hot stuff. Sonic walks to the fridge aisle and fills the basket. As he closes the fridge door and turns around, we hear his phone buzz. He pulls it from where his back pocket would be if he were wearing pants, hammerspace style. On his phone is a message from Mario reading, Hey. Sonic looks up. Mario is standing about 15 feet in front of him, holding his phone, a wine bottle in his arm. Sonic smiles and types on the phone. Their text messages appear on screen. Hey. I miss you. I miss you too. When we get home, I'm going to turn on the washing machine and the TV, and then I'm going to do dirty, dirty things to you. Oh. Sonic blushes. <laughs> Mario laughs at him. Chili dogs first? During. Sonic tries to suppress a laugh and fails. A toad holding a Lunchables pack looks up at him, confused. We may like lovers in a warm embrace. Your kisses... They're hardly through the door of their apartment when Mario has Sonic up against the wall. His hands on his shoulders, Sonic's on his hips. Their faces are close, their eyes half closed. They kiss passionately for several seconds. One of Mario's suspenders falls down his shoulder. Disconnecting, they look blissfully into each other's eyes. I love you, Sonic the Hedgehog. I love you, Mario Mario. I don't want the night to steal you away. Mario is seen in the shower, silhouetted by the shower curtains. Meanwhile, Sonic has what appears to be every hot dog from the package he bought in a pan on the stovetop. He moves the pan back and forth as they sizzle. He picks up the opened can of chili and looks at it. Shrugging, he dumps the contents onto the hot dogs. Mario gets out of the shower and wraps a towel around his waist. Looking at himself in front of the mirror, he hears the sound of a smoke alarm and runs into the kitchen. The pan is sitting in the sink, black smoke billowing up from it. Sonic is struggling with a fire extinguisher that he can't figure out how to work. He notices Mario and guiltily grins and waves. Spikes, again? Mario walks over and turns on the tap, dousing the pan. Right. Water does the... the beats fire. I knew that.
Hey kids, Mario and I were lucky that the water put out my burning chili dogs, but you might not be so lucky. When dealing with a pan fire in the kitchen, your first move should be to try and smother it with a metal lid. If you have some baking soda at hand, that would also do the trick. But whatever you do, don't try to put out a grease fire using water. If there's oil in your pan and it splashes, that can just spread the fire and make things worse. And the vaporizing water might carry grease particles in it, which can also spread the fire. Remember, when the heat is on, you gotta stay cool. Evening. They're together on the couch now. Mario is sat up, while Sonic is stretched out with his legs on the couch, his head on Mario's lap. They're both sipping from wine glasses. Hmm. Do you like wine? They say it's how classy people get drunk. Is that so? Well, I read it embroidered on a pillow in a thrift shop, so it must be true. Do you not like wine? I don't mean to, like, ruin the moment or whatever. No, 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 no. You, you know you can always be honest with me. I like wine. Fine. Just not as much as other things. Not as much as I like you, for instance. Ooh, smooth. My hero. Hey, can I get up? No. You're my prisoner. Oh, please. No. I'm staying here forever with my head on your dick. That didn't come out like I meant it. Well, if I can't get up, I can't go down on one knee. On... Mario passes him a ring box. Sonic takes it, confused. He slides his legs out and sits up, understanding. Mario! Don't say anything before you open it, dummy. Sonic smiles, as Mario grabs the ring box and moves onto the floor in front of him, getting down on one knee. Ogilvy Maurice Hedgehog, you've made me the happiest plumber in Brooklyn, nay, in any borough. Would you do me the honor? Of marrying me. Mario opens the ring box. It's a silver ring with a red gemstone mounted on it. Sonic stares at it. Slowly, the gemstone begins to glow, and Sonic freezes. He stares at the glowing gemstone, terrified of what it means. No. Mario says nothing, visibly crushed by what he interprets as a rejection. I mean, yes, yes, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Spikes, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. Defiantly, Sonic grabs the ring and puts it on. I love you, Mario. I want us to be together forever. He stands and pulls Mario up, hugging him. He holds him tight, scared to lose him. We hear the sound of another ring portal opening up behind Sonic off-screen. Tears begin to fall down Sonic's cheeks. Spikes! Behind you! What is that? Sonic keeps his eyes closed. <sighs> Screw it. Who needs it? I'm not leaving you. Spikes? Just ignore it. Spikes! Please! The tears are streaming now. Suddenly the portal begins to suck in air like a vacuum. Objects in the room fly into it, first small things sitting on tables and shelves, then entire pieces of furniture. Only Mario is unaffected, standing at the center of the room, holding Sonic by both hands as he dangles horizontally. Spikes, what's happening? Mario? I'm scared. Mario? Yes? Uh, I'll always love you. Tears form in the corner of Mario's eyes. He doesn't understand. Sonic's hands slip through his grasp, and the scene slows almost to a freeze frame as we see Mario reaching out to Sonic with one hand, and Sonic falling into the portal. As he does, the scene returns to full speed. The portal flickers away, and the various objects and debris that were previously floating fall to the floor. Mario keeps reaching, breathing deeply. Mario's arm falls to his side. Sonic gasps, his eyes bolting open. He can't move. He's between cylinders as tall as him and packed together tightly. He struggles, but his arms are pinned. 
Put me back! Put me back! His surroundings suddenly quake as the limited light being cast on him changes. Then with a shrill, drawn-out noise... The room is suddenly filled with light as the wall is torn off. Looking down on Sonic is Robotnik, who is about ten times his height. Sonic's anger gives way to fear. Oh, sweet Mobius. Robotnik reaches in and grabs Sonic, his movements slow, emphasizing his scale. He pulls Sonic out of what we can now see was a plastic package full of hot dogs. Robotnik haphazardly tosses Sonic into a pan full of sizzling water. Sonic yells out in pain, as one does when simultaneously pressed against a hot metal surface and exposed to boiling water across the whole body. Robotnik slides the pan around on his giant stovetop, Sonic rolling around uncontrollably. His yells are interrupted a few times as his face rolls down towards the pan. Suddenly, the pan stops moving, and Sonic is still. He tries to catch his breath for a few seconds. Three metal bars pierce his body as he screams in pain once again, as Robotnik jabs him with a fork. Lifting him out of the pan, Robotnik brings him over to the counter, where he has a bun Sonic's size sitting on a plate. He lays Sonic down in the bun, pushing him off the fork. Sonic clutches at the punctures in his chest. He tries to stand up. A shadow looms over him. He looks up. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no! Like a nightmarish version of Nickelodeon slime, Sonic is drenched in chili. He falls back down into his bun as Robotnik lifts it, bringing it towards his face. His jaw slowly hinges open, becoming unsettlingly wide as Sonic nears his mouth. The movie pauses. Talk about you are what you eat. Am I right? (laughs) No, but seriously though, I am in an immense amount of pain right now. The movie is resumed, and Robotnik tosses Sonic and the bun into his mouth, slamming his jaws shut after them. Green Hill Zone, morning. Tails lies on the ground, not having moved since we last saw him. The sign, the crater, and the wrecked eggmobile are still there. The sun is rising over the mountains behind the lake. A garbage truck arrives, stopping in front of the wreckage. A claw emerges from the truck and swings around to the wreckage. It grabs the eggmobile by the wrecking ball, picking it up. As it does, the remains of the eggmobile begin to crumble, some of them falling back to the ground. The claw swings around and drops the wrecking ball into the back of the truck. As it comes back around to get the rest of the eggmobile, the driver notices tails. Huh? The driver's side door of the truck swings open, and out hops Coconuts, a robot monkey. Hey! Hey, kid! You're still here? He runs over to Tails, who's unconscious. Coconuts hesitates, looking back to his truck, before holding Tails by the shoulders to try and wake him. Oh, jeez, kid, you're freezing! Were you lying here all night? What? Your friend never came back, huh? Tails realizes Coconut is a bad Nick. Who are you? Ah, I'm not gonna hurt you, kid. I'm just the janitor. Janitor? My name's Coconuts. You're a bad Nick! And you're hypothermic. Hold on, I've got a blanket in the truck. Coconuts runs over to his truck and climbs back inside. Tails watches him, sitting up. He rubs his eyes. Why do you have a blanket? You're a robot. Coconuts hurries back and wraps the blanket around Tails' shoulders. I sleep in the truck sometimes. Did Robotnik give you the blanket? <laughs> Dr. Robotnik? Nah. Some ladies near here run a quilting circle. Can he even get cold? Well, not technically, no. It helps me get to sleep, though. So what happened? I got the gist from Dr. Robotnik, but it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Sonic went through this big ring portal to a special zone. Is that a normal thing? That happen often? We knew it was possible. Knuckles has talked about it before. He's the red guy? Yeah, you know him? 
I saw them on the screen somewhere. What we don't know is what special zones are like. They could be anything. He could be anywhere. I have no idea. No way of knowing. Boy, that's rough. Tails tears up and hugs Coconuts. Coconuts is caught off guard and doesn't know what to do. I'm scared. What if I never see him again? What if... What if... Hey, hey, it's okay, kid. It's okay. I'm sure he'll pop through another portal any second now. I tried to stay awake. I tried to wait for him. Hey, you're hardly gonna miss him, are you? Here, you go back to sleep, and I'll wake you if he shows up. Really? Sure. Least I can do. He's cleaning up Dr. Robotnik's trash anyhow. Tails lies down, holding the blanket tight around him. He watches Coconuts. He doesn't know if he wants to trust him or not. Coconuts watches the horizon, making a show of watching for the portal to comfort Tails. Hey, Coconuts? Yeah? Do, do you have an animal inside you? Do I... Like a squirrel or a, a chicken or something? Yeah, I think so. I don't really like to think about it. Tails is silent. Feeling his gaze, Coconuts turns to look him in the eye, trying to show that he's being honest. I know. I get it. I don't like it either. I don't like knowing that I've got some critter trapped inside me. I don't like that 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 life was taken to bring me into existence. But the alternative is me not existing. Do you know what it is? No. Dr. Robotnik doesn't bother to tell us stuff like that. It could be anything. It could be a fox. Coconut stares at him. Tails looks away. Uh, I'm sorry. That, that was mean. No, I deserve that. I mean, we're enemies, aren't we? Don't say that. I'm... I'm happy you exist. Coconuts looks at Tails and smirks. No one's ever told me that before. Hey, you haven't even told me your name. It's Miles, but my friends call me Tails. Can I call you that? Tails nods. There is a moment of calm as the two sit together in silence. Robotnik's teeth pounds together, mashing the bun and narrowly missing Sonic, who manages to slip away. Then Robotnik's tongue shifts upwards and Sonic, desperately trying to cling on to something, slides down his throat. Sonic tumbles into the juices in Robotnik's stomach with a splash, followed swiftly by the chewed bun fragments. He submerged for a moment, before floating to the surface and gasping for air, holding onto a buoyant piece of bun. Trying to catch his breath, he looks at the stomach interior around him. His fear begins to subside. It is promptly replaced with rage. Motherfucker! The fuck did I do to deserve all this shit? Did I piss off God? Am I in hell right now? I mean, fuck! I killed a man today! And it was me! I killed myself! He jams a pointing finger at his chest repeatedly. Was that suicide? Or murder? Fuck if I know! But it was fucked! And then I fell in love! I fell in love like a fucking Richard Curtis movie! And next thing I know, he's gone, and I'm being tortured and eaten alive by the fat fuck I've dedicated my life to preventing from fucking up the entire world! I mean, for real! Fuck that noise! Is this supposed to be funny? Is that what this is? No, I'll tell you what it is. It's way past fucking uncool! Is this how I die? Am I just gonna fucking die in here now? Fucking... He slams down one fist on the bun as he screams, his other hand still holding on. He stops, and looking at his hands, his expression changes to panic. He looks down into the sea of stomach juices and sees a red glow at the bottom. He flips onto his back, lying on the bun. He closes his eyes and strokes the bridge of his nose like he has a headache. (laughs) 
His arm falls limp to his side as he stares up. A text message appears on the screen like earlier. Sonic looks over towards it, his expression remaining cold and neutral. I miss you. His gaze returns to above him. I miss you too. He rolls over, plunging into the stomach juices. He sinks down with bits of semi-digested, indiscernible foodstuffs floating by. At the bottom of the stomach we see his goal, Mario's engagement ring. He swims down towards it, determined. As he reaches the squishy floor, he grabs the ring, hugging it close to his chest. Tears flow from his closed eyes, shooting up through the denser stomach acid. He slides the ring onto his finger, and with newfound determination, jumps to swim back up. And unable to swim, promptly falls back to the ground. Oh yeah. Lying face down, Sonic notices a fleshy portal in front of him on the wall. Robotnik's pyloric sphincter. Well, I think I can guess where that leads. Nope, not happening. I'd rather stay here and die. A few seconds after he says this, he hears a tune start playing. As he hears it, he shifts uncomfortably. He sits up and crosses his arms. He looks at the sphincter. Disgusted, he looks away. Sonic climbs through the sphincter and falls into the duodenum, finding footing in a dip in the path. A flood of porridgey, homogenous paste follows after him, the fully digested food from the stomach. He sees it fall down the sheer drop in front of him. As Sonic looks down, the camera vertigo zooms his point of view, and he steps away, dizzy. He sniffs and quickly covers his nose with his hand. Ah, oh, nasty! He looks up and suddenly notices a turquoise chaos emerald, floating about ten feet above the fall. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. He looks back and forth between the emerald and the fall. He clenches his fist and, lifting it to his face, kisses his ring. Wish me luck. Ah! <laughs> he spits out the stomach slime he just kissed. He steps back, takes a running start, and jumps toward the emerald. In slow motion, he reaches for it, and his finger slips. He starts to fall, panic on his face, but as he tilts around and sees the emerald above him, he homing attacks towards it and grabs it with both hands. He shoots back in the direction of where he jumped from, clutching the emerald, but just barely falls short down the pit. A ring portal about half the diameter of the duodenum opens a ways down below him, and he falls into it. A meeting room. Day. Fifteen or so people in suits sit around a table strewn with laptops, printed scripts, notes, and drawings. There's a whiteboard with rough sketches of Sonic resembling Naoto Oshima's original Mr. Needlemouse drawings. The walls are decorated with movie posters. Super Monkey Ball. To be a hero, it takes balls. Crazy Taxi. Driven to the brink. Echo the Dolphin. IDFK has a dolphin and there's aliens, I guess. Shenmue, starring some white guy. All right, hear me out. Cat Princess. Been done. Damn it. The portal opens up above their table, and Sonic falls face first into it, sending papers flying. They slowly flutter back down. Sonic's various burns and wounds are gone. Huh. That's... Ewan, did you write this? Ewan, the screenwriter is sat at the table, tapping on their phone, not paying attention. They briefly glance up at Sonic with disinterest, shrug in response to the suit, and return to their phone. Uh, where am I? Uh, you're at Sega Pictures. We make movies! Uh, precisely. Actually, we were just hard at work on a movie about you. We didn't really expect you to uh, uh, drop in, as it were, however. Is Mario here? Some of the suits <laughs> chuckle, confused. Actually, he's over at Illumination. He is? Where's that? I don't uh, think you fully understand. This isn't the world you're from. Uh, we exist 
outside it, pulling the strings. We're producers, movie producers. We're the ones concocting the narrative and writing everything that happens to you. So what you're telling me is everything that's been happening to me today is for a movie you're making? Exactly. I see. There's a short pause. Then Sonic launches forward, attacking the producer. He clings to the back of his collar and punches him in the face repeatedly. Ewan looks up from their phone, uneasy, and sneaks away towards the exit. Security! Two burly guards walk in from outside and pull Sonic away from the producer. They hold him by the arms, a foot or so above the ground. Why? Why did you do this to me? The producer, getting up off the floor, dabs at his bloodied lip with a handkerchief from his pocket. He's shaken, but somehow seems less intimidated than he was before. You have to understand, we've got to sell a movie. And movies need conflict. You call an extended four sequence conflict? Sonic the Hedgehog knows what four is? You want to come in here and tell us how to do our job? This is our story, not yours. We know what makes the big bucks. We've done the focus groups and the online market research. Please, can you just get me home? Well, I suppose that's up to you. You just said- How about this? I'll cut you a deal. He gestures to the guards who drop Sonic back onto the ground and take a step back. We can write you your happy ending. Uh, Actually, the screenwriter went home. But first, you're going to do something for us. What's that? Well, we're making one Sonic movie. With the cinematic universe to follow if it sells. (laughs) Naturally. But we're still not maximizing profits. You are a hot property, after all. Not as hot as you once were, granted, but we've done more with less before. What are you saying? Well, we already licensed you out to Disney for two Wreck-It Ralph movies. Uh, I don't remember that. Oh, we had Roger do it. Who's Roger? Hi! Roger has been sitting at the meeting table off screen. He's your voice actor. I'm Sonic! Sonic the Hedgehog! He... he sounds nothing like me. Roger looks crushed. Anyway, we've got another cameo lined up for Ready Player One with Warner Brothers. You think you could do that? Why doesn't Mr. Fantastic here do it? Simple. We have to pay Mr. Fantastic. We don't have to pay you. All right, could you not call me Mr. Fantastic? So I do this movie cameo for you, and then I can go home? Of course. Do this one thing for us, and we can send you wherever you like. Wherever? Sonic is absentmindedly rubbing his ring with his thumb. The producer grins devilishly. All right. I'll do it. The producer clasps his hands together, pleased. He nods to one of the others. So how am I getting to the set? Do I get a trailer? One of the suits drops a cardboard box labeled Demo Props onto the table and pulls out a blue Chaos Emerald. He throws it to Sonic, who catches it instinctively. A portal opens up behind him. Wait, what? I thought this was just a movie. It is. Have fun. He shoves Sonic into the portal, breaking his facade of politeness. Sonic disappears into it. He didn't sign a contract. I know. Are we going to- He punched me in the face seven times. Right. So that- I was lying, yes. Very clever, sir. (sighs) Would someone get me some ice, please? Sonic falls into the middle of a battle on Planet Doom. The ground is covered in snow, and there are mountains in the background. A massive army of various pop culture characters attacks a massive army of Sixer soldiers defending their shielded fortress. Lasers fly, things explode, and robots and vehicles can be seen dotted throughout the background. We're not going to take it by Twisted Sister is playing somewhere in the distance. As Sonic lands amid the carnage, he quickly witnesses several deaths. Junkhead beats someone to death with a croquet mallet. A Sixer blows Gordon Freeman's head off with a gunshot, takes his crowbar, and proceeds to beat down Robin with it, before being grabbed and eaten by Preston, 
the robot dog from Wallace and Grub. Well, screw this! Sonic runs away, dodging through the chaos, eventually finding a downed ATST to hide behind. He frantically looks around. Somebody piloting the Iron Giant notices Sonic cowering and stops to examine him. Are you... camping? What? No, I am not camping. I am not a video game character! Uh-huh. A DeLorean speeds past, diverting the Iron Giant's attention. Hey, yo Z, I got you covered. He runs away, joining the fray of battle. Okay then, bye Iron Giant. From the movie, The Iron Giant? Four Ninja Turtles from the next mutation run by, readying their weapons. And there go the Ninja Turtles, of course. At least they know how to- The sound of coins scattering is heard. Raphael's severed head flies from off screen and lands in Sonic's lap. Oh shit! Jesus! After shoving it away, the head lies limp, tongue hanging out, facing up towards Sonic. More like cool but screwed. He stands up and talks in the general direction of the sky, hoping to be heard by the producers. Look, I think there's been some kind of misunderstanding. I thought this would be like a sitcom cameo, where I walk on to thunderous applause, say something self-deprecating, and walk off again. But this looks more like Lord of the Rings, with a hundred percent more lasers. A Scott Pilgrim avatar takes out a few Sixers soldiers with his glowing sword, before being blown apart by a shotgun blast. His sword falls to the ground a few feet away from Sonic. Sonic looks down at it, looks up at the battle around him, and takes a deep breath. He slowly walks over to the sword. He crouches down to pick it up, and as he does, a laser flies by where his head was a split second before. Sonic's eyes are wide, his teeth are gritted, and the top of his spikes are singed. He straightens back up, leaving the sword. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Sonic out. He peels out and begins running through the battle, dodging weapon fire and debris, ignoring the action around him. Nope, 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 nope. In the distance, Mechagodzilla rises from the ground and roars. Sonic briefly turns his head when he hears it. Nope, 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 no, 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 no. A Gregzilla no, Knuckles no, avatar no, carrying no, no, a minigun no. notices him. Why are you running? Nope! He continues running until he reaches the edge of the chaos. He stops to catch his breath before examining his surroundings. In the snow on the ground, he can see a stampede of footprints leading towards the ongoing battle. He breathes heavily, exhausted. This game is in dire need of a pause button. <laughs> Tears form in his eyes. He laughs quietly as they begin to stream down his face. He curls up on the ground. Covering his mouth with his elbow, he stops laughing to let out a muffled scream. Hey, pussy. He looks up. Standing above him is another character avatar, this time of Sayori from Doki Doki Literature Club. Why are you crying? Do I need a reason? Deep. She sits down next to him carelessly. What's your name? Sonic examines her. Sonic. <laughs> I meant your real name, smartass. Well, Ogilvy, but... <laughs> Ogilvy? Okay. No, 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 it's cool. I like it. Ogilvy. <laughs> Nobody calls me Ogilvy. Just Sonic or the blue blur, or spy- He stops. Or spy? Just don't call me late for dinner. He curls back up. You're funny. Thanks? So, what's wrong? Do you want to talk about it? I don't want to be here. Big mood. I do not know what that means. Sayori stands up. Well, if you don't want to be here, then let's go. It's a video game after all. You don't have to be anywhere if you don't want to. Sonic looks up. Sayori is offering her hand out to him. He looks up for a beat, 
then wipes the tears from his face with the back of his hand. He takes her hand, and she pulls him up. With her free hand, she pulls up a holographic menu, and after a few clicks, she throws a portal in front of them. Unlike the ring portals, the other side is fully visible, revealing a room with posters on the wall. Sayori runs into it, pulling Sonic behind her. They walk through the portal into the room. Sonic stumbles clumsily. The room is fairly small, with most of its space taken up by a computer desk in one corner and a bunk bed. The bottom bunk is gone, with a TV set up in its place, and a tower of haphazardly stacked game systems next to it. Opposite the TV are two beanbag chairs. On the walls are anime and punk rock posters. In contrast to the fairly ordinary interior, there's one window in the room through which can be seen the landscape of an alien world, with purple mountains and strange moons in the sky. Is this your room? Yep. Well, my virtual room. My real room is... less cool. Sonic walks around, examining the contents of the room. How does this place work? Can you just... make... anything? Uh... yeah. Pretty much. If you're good in Blender. So, why don't you have, like, a mansion, or a castle, or a big open field or something? She thinks about it. I don't know. I always liked having forts, you know? Little hideouts that were just big enough for me. I guess maybe it feels like more of a safe space if I can see it all at once. Sonic looks out the window. What's your home like? Mansion? castle. Big open field. Sayori stares at Sonic's body curiously. He notices and shifts awkwardly. You're new to the Oasis, right? Where'd you get that character model? I've never seen it before. It's definitely classic Sonic, but it doesn't look like the one from Generations. Did you make it yourself? Sonic looks utterly confused by this line of questioning, so he just shrugs. Hey, check this out. She opens up her menu again, and swipes a few times, selecting a new character model. Her avatar flickers, and changes to Super Mario. It's-a me! Hoo-hoo! Spaghetti! Sonic's eyes widen. He's visibly upset. After a moment, he averts his gaze, pained. Please change back. W what's wrong? Please! Okay! Okay, sure, sure, man. Just, just trying to cheer you up. Sonic stays silent still looking away as she goes back to the Sayori avatar. Look, I, I know that stuff can be hard. Sonic turns his head, but not enough to be fully looking at her. Back on the battlefield. I, I don't want to project or, or pretend I understand. The truth is, I don't know how it's hard for you. But I know how it's hard for me. Sonic says nothing. Hell, for, for all I know, you're just wallowing in narcissistic self-pity. Sonic smiles coldly. How is it hard for you? Sonic thinks for a moment. What's the worst feeling you've ever had? I don't really like how it feels to lose a tooth. Or when you feel cramps in your stomach and you know 45 minutes later you're gonna have diarrhea. Like you've got an Augustus Gloop situation with some German turd blocking the pipes and gallons of liquidy chocolate building up All behind right, him. Alright, enough. Frickin' gross. My point is, today, I topped my previous worst feeling. And then I topped that, and so on, over and over again. I discovered new kinds of pain I didn't know existed. So I think I've earned... A little bit of wallowing. I've got some notebooks if you want to write edgy poetry. Well, I do have one. It's called Augustus Glue. No! <laughs> Sonic smiles. His smile falters as he thinks of something. Do you think I'm a good person? Look, man, I've known you for a hot three minutes. I don't think I can make that call yet. No offense. I used to be. Or, I used to think I was. I used to do the right thing every time. Everything was always... clear. It was always so easy, you know? Kinda. 
but it's... It's really hard to know what the right thing to do is when... When everything's so confusing. It's like sensory overload. I thought I knew what was real and what wasn't. What mattered. But... It's... I don't think I've been doing a very good job anymore. At being who I'm supposed to be. I get it. You do? She plops herself down into a beanbag chair. Sure. I mean, when I was younger, I was happy all the time. Didn't even have to think about it. Didn't need a reason. I was just content. But now... I find myself getting the reverse of that more often. And it sucks. Real bad. Sonic's looking at her again now. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, forget about it. Hey, I've got some video games here. You want to play something? Are we not already in a video game? She opens her inventory menu and scrolls through her game collection. So that's it? You just distract yourself? Pretend like nothing's wrong? Well, yeah. What else is there to do? Sonic thinks about this. I got Sonic. She presses the game in her inventory and materializes a Sega Genesis cartridge. She grabs it, getting up to walk over to the TV. She pulls the Genesis out from the middle of the Tower of Consoles, and after putting the cartridge in it, drops it on the floor in front of the TV. Sonic stays at the window, starting to ramble quietly to himself. I left people behind. I don't know if I'll see any of them again. But I know for sure that I won't see all of them again. I don't even know if they're still there. Did that world just cease to exist when I left? What do I do with that? There are no wires, but Sonic 1 boots up on Sayori's screen. She swipes through her inventory again, this time bringing into existence a controller, and returns to her chair. Recognizing the intro music, Sonic walks over to inspect the game. On the screen, Sayori plays through the first act of Green Hill Zone. What is this? Are you serious, man? It's Sonic 1. Vanilla. Emulated. No ROM hacks. No spin dash. No Christian white head fixes. Spike glitch intact. Oh, and it's NTSC, obviously. Not the 50 hertz PAL version. That's me. Yes. You're controlling me. Th that is how video games function, correct? He watches as the sprite on the screen obeys the orders of Sayori's button presses. Sonic seems to go dizzy, losing balance and supporting himself with his hand on the wall. Sayori notices and pauses the game. H hey, are you okay, man? You paused him. He, he doesn't mind. Sonic holds his hand to his head, staring downward. Then he looks up, realization in his eyes. I'm not in control. What are you talking about? I've got to go. He walks towards the exit. He grabs the doorknob, but it doesn't move. He turns to Sayori and points at her accusingly. Why is this locked? Calm down, man. Why did you lock me in here? There's not a real door. This room doesn't have an outside. I don't need it to. Sonic looks around, panicking. He looks at the window. Running towards it, he jumps and, curling into a ball, crashes through. Sonic falls to the planet's surface, followed by chips of shattered glass. He lands on his feet. Behind him, Sayori's room is a floating gray cube, featureless except for the shattered window. Looking around, he peels out, speeding through the landscape, curving around the mountains. He's not running for long when he suddenly halts. He's reached the end, a cliff face where the world around him stops. Beyond it is unrendered empty blackness. He looks out into it. Take control. This isn't real. He closes his eyes, and holding his arms up to his sides, falls forward into the darkness. We see Sonic's closed eyes as he tumbles through blackness. His face wrinkles and withers before our eyes. A beard grows and grays, as if we're watching a time lapse. 
He opens his eyes. He face plants into a floor we can't see. He stands up slowly and looks around. Blood trickles from his nose, which he wipes away indifferently with one hand, staining his white glove. In the distance, a familiar voice echoes. I'm waiting! This isn't real. Sonic begins walking slowly in the direction of the voice. Hello? This isn't real. The other Sonic speeds towards him, stopping a few feet in front of him. Our Sonic doesn't stop walking. You're not... Our Sonic plunges his hand into the other Sonic's chest. Blood seeps down his torso as the two Sonics make eye contact. The other Sonic is terrified. Our Sonic is cold and calm. Strange, isn't it? He pulls his arm back. The other Sonic falls to the ground. In his hand, our Sonic isn't holding a heart. He's holding a yellow Chaos Emerald, dripping with blood. As the portal appears, Sonic looks around. He looks at the corpse at his feet. He looks at the portal. This is my choice. Through whatever chaos is to come, I am in control. Huh. I should have taken one of those notebooks. He steps through the portal. <laughs> Mount of Olives. Night. Sonic kneels alone, muttering a prayer with his hands together. He is now wearing a baggy cloth shirt and a robe. He still has his ring, but the bloodstains have disappeared. Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. He stands and walks over to a clearing, where eleven people are sleeping in bedrolls around a fire. Sonic looks down on them. Sleep on now, and take your rest. Sonic turns and sees, in the distance, an approaching mob of priests and elders brandishing swords and sticks, leading them as tails, holding a torch. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Tails speaks quietly to the man closest to him. Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. The sleeping disciples stir at this, and realizing what's happening, begin to get up and stand at Sonic's side. Nearing Sonic, Tails hands his torch to the man he'd been speaking to, and embraces Sonic in his arms. Hail, Master! Pulling him close, Tails kisses Sonic. They separate. Friend, wherefore art thou come? Two of the mob grab Sonic's arms. Reacting, one of the disciples at Sonic's side draws a sword and slices at the man holding Sonic's left arm, cutting off his ear. The man falls back, yelling in shock. The other man releases Sonic's arm, retracting in fear. Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father? and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how, then, shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? The disciple looks at Sonic in confusion, backing away. Sonic turns to address the mob. Are ye come out against a thief, with swords and staves, for to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Looking at each other, the disciples, weeping, begin to flee. One locks eyes with Sonic, nodding. Sonic nods back, forgiveness in his eyes. The men take Sonic's arms once again and lead him away. Common Hall. Morning. Sonic kneels in the middle of the room, surrounded by Roman soldiers. As he stares at the floor, they tear off his clothes. Once he's naked, still wearing his shoes, they put a red robe on him. The crowd of soldiers part as, in mock solemnity, one soldier approaches Sonic, carrying in both hands a crown of thorns. As they put it on his head, the crowd cheers. 
It pierces his forehead, and trickles of blood run down Sonic's face. A soldier shoves a reed into Sonic's right hand, and several soldiers kneel mockingly in front of him. Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, Hail King, King of the, of the Jews. Jews! Sonic continues to stare at the floor, repressing any reaction. Tails is home. Day. Tails sits on the floor in the dark, rocking back and forth as tears stream down his face. He puts his fingers to his lips and feels them. He stands up and throws a noose over a support on his ceiling. Suddenly the movie pauses, with a VCR pause symbol in the bottom corner and flickering static on screen, and Sonic appears. Hey kids, I just felt you should know that, believe it or not, the King James Bible does not follow the World Health Organization's guidelines for representing suicide in the media. According to those guidelines, what they should have done is taken the opportunity to educate the public about suicide and provide information about where to seek help. What they shouldn't have done is presented suicide as a solution to a problem or explicitly described the method of suicide. Remember, if you take your own life, you don't regenerate. Ever. Game over. Sonic speeds out of shot again. The pause symbol switches to a fast-forward symbol, speeding over Tails' is hanging and resuming in the next scene. Outside Jerusalem's walls, day. We see Sonic, bloodied and nailed to a wooden cross. His is between two other crosses where men are crucified beside him. There are nails in his wrists, and above his head is a sign nailed to the cross that reads, This is Sonic, the King of the Jews in Hebrew. A voice is heard yelling at Sonic from below. Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the son of God, come down from the cross. Priests and scribes join in, mocking him. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Ho ho! Laughable! Sunset. We see Sonic's face, holding in the pain as the sun sets. Eli, Eli! Lama Sabachthani! His head drops down, exhausted, his eyes closed. The clouds shift and change dramatically. Thunder rumbles. Suddenly, something small and white falls from the clouds. It hits Sonic in the head, waking him. Sonic stares up at the clouds, then down at what hit him, a white chaos emerald. Sonic looks back up. The text is above him. Sonic got a chaos emerald. A ring portal opens underneath the cross, which falls in whole. A grassy clearing. Dusk. A portal opens up, dropping Sonic onto the ground, still nailed to the cross. As it hits the ground, the cross shatters, freeing Sonic. He sits up on his knees. We see nails in his wrists, but the blood dripping from them is fresh. The rest of his scars, as well as his beard, are gone, though he's still wearing his ring. In the background, we see the sky and a dramatic formation of orange clouds. He looks down at himself. He pulls the nails from his wrists, pained. Staring at them in his palm, he drops them. As they fall and bounce off part of the broken cross, making a pinging noise, realization flashes in Sonic's eyes. He holds his head in his hands, his fingers pressed against his temples. Green Hill Zone, day. Tails lies on the grass with his blanket, like we saw him before. He slowly opens his eyes. He looks around. Coconuts isn't there, though we can still see his truck. Coconuts? Coconuts! <laughs> Coconuts jumps out of the truck. He's carrying a tin lunchbox. It's okay. I'm here. You said you'd stay and watch. You, you, you said you wouldn't leave. I just went to get some food. 
Aren't you hungry? Please, don't leave me alone again. Hey, it's okay. I'm right here. Hey, do you like, uh... He opens the lunchbox. It has a picture of Curious George on the front. Caesar salad? N not really, no. Me neither. Then why do you have it? In case I ever have to give away my lunch to someone who likes Caesar salad. Duh. Coconuts opens the Tupperware container with the salad in it. Holding it up to his nose, he sniffs it before recoiling. Oh boy. I think I've packed this one too many times. It's salad. What's the worst thing that could happen? Coconuts holds out the open container to Tails. Tails leans forward and sniffs. He's disgusted, amused, and confused. What is that? I think it's rust, maybe? Rust! Coconuts dips a finger in the salad and tastes it. Maybe. Rust salad? <laughs> yeah, rust salad. That'd be a good band name. You think? Yeah. Do you play anything? Not really. Aw, oh, come on. You must play something. I, um, I write. You write? Songs? They're not good. Well, perfect. That's totally on brand. You think Russ Salad's gonna be performing good songs? <laughs> All right. So you write the songs, and I'll provide the vocals. <laughs> hey, come on now. I got a beautiful singing voice. Honest. <laughs> Stop. Now you're just hurting my feelings. <laughs> hey, is anybody gonna come looking for you? Do you have any family? Any other friends? Just Sonic. And Knuckles, but... He's off on Angel Island. Sonic's all I've got. He's my picket fence. Will you introduce us when he comes back? Tails' eyes shine. He smiles, a shaky smile. He feels like he might start crying again if he talks. So he just nods. Coconuts smiles reassuringly. Does he like Caesar salad? Suddenly a portal opens up in front of them. Tails jumps to his feet, excited. You can ask him yourself! Coconut stares up at the portal, mm. curious but concerned. Out of the portal flies Dr. Eggman in his Eggmobile. Get behind me. I can take him! You are seven years old! Get behind me! Eight and a half! Coconuts pushes Tails behind his back. Batnik! Hey there! Who might you be? Dr. Robotnik's cousin? Something like that, yes! Where is Dr. Robotnik? His lays on top of a mountain a few miles north of here. Much obliged. The Eggmobile flies off into the distance. What was that about? Couldn't tell you. You're not gonna leave, are you? Nah. My orders are to clean up Dr. Robotnik's mess. He never said anything about dealing with his relatives. They're his problem. You haven't been cleaning up much of his mess since he got here. Hmm. I see how it is. I give you my blanket and my delicious lunch, and you get on my case for taking an extended break. I just don't want him to get mad at you. Do you want to help me then? Can I drive the truck? Absolutely not. Oh, come on. Just a little bit. You can teach me. I, I already know how to fly a plane. You do not. I do. We'll let you fly a plane. Sonic is on his knees. The sky behind him is still a brilliant orange along the horizon, fading into darkness above. Sonic stands up and turns to look toward the horizon. As he does, the camera shifts to reveal what we couldn't see before, a city down beneath the clearing where Sonic's standing. As the camera tilts down, the city fills the screen, the orange horizon above it. Sonic, back to the camera, seems small in comparison until a dolly zoom pulls in with Sonic closer and the city becoming tiny at his feet. We cut to his face. He breathes heavily, frowning. Suddenly, a barrage of tiny pellets sting the side of his face. He flinches, covering his cheek with his hand, as the source flies by his head, a tiny jet. What? As the jet comes back around for another run, Sonic's expression becomes more determined. When it nears, he catches it in his hand, holding it for a moment. He crushes it in his grasp. It explodes between his fingers. Sonic turns to the city, curious, and stepping forward, slides down the hill on his feet until he reaches it. 
The buildings are small, or more accurately, Sonic is massive. He looks to his feet, seeing a six-inch boss. Intrigued, he picks it up, holding it vertically, and looks through the windows. Inside, little people are falling around, panicking. Sonic's surprised. A siren begins sounding across the city, drawing Sonic's attention and making him look up from the boss in his hand. He straightens and lowers the boss to his side. More jets arrive in a trail formation, one after the other in a row. A smirk grows on Sonic's face as an idea dawns on him. He winds up, then throws the bus into the planes, taking them all out in one stroke. As he does so, his expression changes, letting out the anger and pain in him with the catharsis of the throw. His movements are at full speed, not slowed down like a kaiju movie, or like Robotnik in the kitchen. He stops, the gravity of what he just did occurring to him. He steps back and stares at the burning shrapnel scattered across the road in front of him. I was a hero. I fought for what was right. Now what am I? Some kind of- From the right, a tank shell hits him in the eye, interrupting his train of thought. He puts his hands to his face and yells out in pain. Ah, shit, biscuit ass, damn it! Holding the injured eye tight, he glares down with his other at the ground, seeing the tank responsible. He marches over to it and stomps on it several times, like a kid stomping on a wasp that just stung him. He stops, panting. To the left, a squealing missile can be heard shooting towards him. He raises his right arm out, his palm open, and the missile hits it and explodes. He looks in the direction it came from, and standing in the city is a figure his height, Mechasonic from Sonic 3. The robot's arm is raised, having just fired the missile. He throws down both arms as his single red eye glows brighter. He lets loose a blast of laser fire. Sonic sidesteps it, looking behind him to watch it explode into the cliff face. Returning his eyes to the robot, Sonic walks forward with determination. When he's close enough, Mecha Sonic, raising his fists, tries to jab him, but Sonic dodges and gets him in the face with a left hook. In a flash of sparks, Mecha Sonic falls to the ground. Getting on top of him, Sonic starts pummeling the robot. Mecha grabs Sonic by the ear, interrupting the barrage and, pulling, headbutts him. Still holding his ear, Mecha kicks Sonic backwards, sending him flying into a building. As Sonic, still on two feet, pulls himself out of the building, he notices something and feels for his ear, which was just torn off by Mecha Sonic and is bleeding down his head. From a nearby rooftop, a man with a camera films the fight. The man grins, pleased by what he's capturing on film. Behind him, another man shifts nervously. Hey man, I, uh, I think we should get out of here. The cameraman turns around angrily. Shut up! I'm filming! I need the sound! Behind him, we see Sonic picking up Becca Sonic in the man's camera display. Sonic throws him in the direction of the two men. The man turns around, finished reprimanding his friend in time to look up. The shadow of Mecha Sonic looms over him. Oh! Mecha Sonic crashes through the building, leveling it. Sonic walks toward him menacingly. Get over here, Mecha Mike Tyson! Looking up, Mecha Sonic waves his arms in fear signaling Sonic to stop. Ignoring him, Sonic grabs one of his arms, and after two hard pulls, tears it out of its socket. He proceeds to swing the arm down on Mecha Sonic's hand repeatedly. On the fourth blow, the glass of Mecha Sonic's eye cracks. Then, lifting the arm above him, Sonic plunges the shoulder end down onto Mecha Sonic's hand, caving it in. We hear Mecha Sonic power down. As Sonic takes a step back, the arm sticks in Mecha Sonic, wrist deep. The hand is still wobbling back and forth from the force of the impact. Sonic chuckles at it and waves back. <laughs> he stops and looks around for a moment, confused. So, where's the emerald? Come on, I did the thing! He points at Mecha Sonic. After a moment, 
he hears the sound of whirring jets and turns to see two more robots flying down towards him. Metal Sonic and Mecha Sonic from Sonic 2. Yes, there are two characters in the main series Sonic timeline named Mecha Sonic. Don't at me, that's canon. Oh, you're joking! As Sonic is turned around, the Mecha Sonic on the ground behind him boots back up and stands, arm still lodged in its head. With his remaining arm, he gets Sonic in a headlock. <coughs> Sonic grabs at the arm, trying to free his neck. He closes his eyes, struggling. When he opens them, the two robots have reached him. He takes a punch to the face from Metal Sonic, then a knee to the body from Mecha Sonic, too. Metal Sonic stops on his foot. Mecha Sonic hits him with an uppercut. Sonic spits out a mouthful of blood. I am the Son of God, and you will show me some respect. Interrupting, Metal Sonic Roundhouse kicks him in the head. All right, that does it. Sonic spin dashes in place freeing himself from Metal Sonic 3's grip. Sonic speeds forward, plowing through Mecha Sonic 2, and leaving a round, sparking hole in his chest. He teeters lifelessly, then falls to the side. Sonic begins running in a curve. Watching him, Metal Sonic's eyes glow the same way Mecha's did when he charged up his laser blast. Metal tracks Sonic, waiting for an opportunity. His targeting system predicts Sonic's semicircle path and moving his gaze to the end of the path, Metal lets loose the laser fire. As he does, Sonic jumps up, curling into a ball and dodging the laser. Instead, it hits what was at the end of Sonic's path, Mecha Sonic 3. The explosion sends shrapnel flying, leaving no recognizable trace of Mecha, save for the arm, which, after a second, falls to the ground where Mecha was standing. Metal looks around, scanning for Sonic, after a moment, he hears the sound of Sonic's homing attack and turns in the direction of the noise. From Metal's perspective, we see Sonic flying towards him with a kick. Metal falls to the ground. He starts to get up, but Sonic's shoe comes down on his face, stomping him back into the ground. Metal raises his head again, and Sonic stomps it down again. As he raises his head one more time, this time more slowly, we hear Sonic struggling on screen. Then a building comes down on Metal's head, crushing it. Metal's arms raise, feeling around for a few seconds, looking for his head. When they don't find it, they fall down limply. From out of the building, a purple chaos emerald rises, smashing through the rubble. Sonic grabs it impatiently as the jingle plays and the text appears, this time reading, Sonic got them all. So that's it, right? I'm done now? I can go home? A ring portal appears below his feet. Disoriented, he falls in, clawing at the air. We see an establishing shot of Robotnik's lair, complete with a gold statue of himself. Robotnik's living room, evening. Robotnik is sat on a very large armchair in front of his TV, wearing a red and white spotted pajama shirt, slippers, and a nightcap. He's eating cotton candy-flavored ice cream straight out of the tub with a scoop. On the TV is an episode of Riverdale. Man, Archie got edgy. He downs some ice cream. The sound of a doorbell rings out. Robotnik looks in its direction, pauses for a beat, then downs another bite of ice cream before returning his attention to the TV. Oh! Eggman smashes through the wall in his eggmobile, startling Robotnik who jumps back and hides behind his chair, still clutching his ice cream. He shoots his arm back over to the chair, grabbing the TV remote and pausing the show. What the shit, dude? Can't a guy get any privacy around here? You are this universe's Dr. Robotnik? Yeah, that's me. Who are you, and what are you doing in my house? I am Dr. Ivo Robotnik from Universe 29912211. Oh, cool. I'm from Universe. Get the hell out of my house. Do? You know where the Chaos Emeralds are. Yes. Back out the way you came. Eggman arms a laser blaster on his Eggmobile. Robotnik backs up and raises his arms, intimidated by the threat. Hey, 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 cool it, okay? Chill. They're in the special zones. 
I tried to get them today, but Sonic foiled my genius scheme. Oh yes? What scheme was that? I, um, I shot him. You... With a gun. Robotnik mimes the action of shooting a gun with his hand. Pew. Hmm. Why didn't I ever think of that? He dismisses the thought. So, the Emeralds are still in the special zones. Well, Sonic went in instead of me, and he's not out yet. So what did you do? I came home and watched Netflix. Eggman stares on in disbelief for a beat, then turns his eyes to the TV. What? I failed. I failed a lot. I wanted to cheer myself up a little. You're a pathetic excuse for a robotnik. Hey, don't judge me. I'm living my best life. Eggman turns the Eggmobile around and flies back out the hole he left in the wall. Yeah, you better run. A small metallic ball with a blinking red light flies through the hole into the room and bounces across the floor a few times before rolling to a stop in front of Robotnik. It blinks with increasing speed, making an ascending beeping noise. Robotnik looks down at it, panicking. He turns his ice cream tub upside down and places it on top of the ball. As Eggman flies away, an explosion erupts from the middle of the lair, which collapses inward. Though he fell through a horizontal portal, the one that spits Sonic into his new surroundings is vertical. He flies out and lands on the ground with a tumble. He has both his ears, his wounds erased by the teleportation once again. Up on his hands and knees, and holding his head in pain, Sonic adjusts and looks around. The room is metallic and dark, illuminated only by an excess of computer monitors. What matters to Sonic is that it isn't home. No. No, 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 no! He slams his fist down on the ground. No! I'm done! Put me home! Hey, easy there. You're through the hard part. Sonic looks up. Then, with a confused expression, he tilts his head to one side. In front of him is Zonic the Zone Cop, a similar-looking blue hedgehog clad in an armored uniform and a visored helmet. He's standing at a 90-degree angle to Sonic, as we can see more clearly now, the entire room is at a 90 degree angle. As he stands up, Sonic's feet are placed firmly on a wall, his personal field of gravity perpendicular to that of Zonic. I don't want to ask. You're in the no zone. You know about parallel universes? Yeah, I've seen movies. Well, this is a perpendicular universe. Perpendicular to all the parallel universes. Oh, I get it. Cute. From here, I keep watch over the multiverse. I'm a zone cop. Zon, the zone cop. Cool, cool. So why am I here and not home? It's what they call a matter of the utmost importance. It always is. No, no, not this important. Not across the entire multiverse important. That's why I needed all of us. What do you... Sonic turns to his right and sees a crowd of different Sonics of all shapes and sizes standing together. Among them are Boom Sonic, Toei Sonic, OVA Sonic, wearing his favorite clothes, Adventure Sonic, Sad AM Sonic, Underground Sonic, X Sonic, Live Action Movie Sonic, Post Redesign Live Action Movie Sonic, IDW Sonic, Blue Core Spec Film Sonic, Japanese Instruction Manual Sonic, Dreamcast Sonic, Lilac from Freedom Planet, Claymation Commercial Sonic, Pakistani McDonald's Sonic, Werehog Sonic, Riders Sonic, Arcade Game Police Sonic, Sanic, Lego Sonic, and countless other variations on modern and classic Sonic. Yeah, sure, why not? Whole bunch of me's, makes sense. As Zonic and Sonic speak to one another, Sonic keeps staring at the crowd. We've been waiting for you. Did you say the thing? A Sonic speaks out from the crowd. You know it. Mr. Fantastic? What? Hey, guys, would you like to introduce yourselves? The crowd responds in unison. I'm Sonic! Sonic the Hedgehog! I'm Batman. Adds one Sonic dressed as Batman. Um, ditto. So, what's the sitch then? Archie Sonic steps forward. It was the Eggman from my universe. Eggman? He means Robotnik. He created a machine that allowed him to hop from dimension to dimension. The British comic Sonic steps up beside him. 
Uh, and he's been using it to steal all the Chaos Emeralds from every other universe. That sounds pretty bad. It's not ideal, no. You're looking at every Sonic from every universe he's raided so far. But you, you have every Chaos Emerald from your dimension. How do you- Eggman went to your universe and we've been watching you ever since. We knew if we could bring you here before you left the special zones, we'd have seven emeralds in our favor, and Eggman would have seven less. So, what now? Now, we need you to take down Eggman. I thought you said I was through the hard part. You look mad. I lied. Sue me. There's a cosmic reset button that could reverse all of this. What's it called? The, uh, cosmic reset button. Sure. Fine. So what's the one thing? Well, there's one... Oh. Yeah, there always is. Um, Eggman has it. Oh, of course he does. There's a pause as they stare down at the sonic bit of clay. Did you get that? A few of us speak Japanese. None of us are bilingual so far, though. Hey, guys! It's so beautiful. Unless you count that. Oh, of course. Good night. Have a sweet dreams. Well, we can count on Eggman staying in your universe as long as he's waiting for you to come back with the Chaos Emeralds. I can warp you to his universe where the Cosmic Reset button is. But he's going to know. Sharpish. We tried it earlier. It didn't go so well. Yeah, I'll say. Eggman killed the fuck out of the Sonic we sent. The others give Sonic for Hire Sonic a disapproving glare. What? He did! But you've got the Chaos Emeralds. If you go supersonic, that might give you enough of an upper hand to get the button. Our Sonic considers for a moment. He motions with his hand to Zonic, and walks a few paces away. Zonic walks over with him, Sonic near the wall since that's where Zonic's standing, and they talk, facing away from the rest. You've seen what I've done. I hurt people. I... I killed people. You've got the Chaos Emeralds. Nothing else matters. It wasn't real. None of it? Even the movie producer guys? They weren't universes. They were special zones. They all poofed out of existence as soon as you left. Even... Mario? I'm sorry. Sonic nods. Okay. Okay! I'll do it. You will? Sure. I'm a 15-year-old hedgehog boy who's gonna go Super Saiyan and press a button to save the multiverse. Nothing could be simpler. You won't be alone. This is the best opportunity we're going to get, so we're going to hold him off for you. He has thousands of Chaos Emeralds. And we have that many Sonics. Eh, divided by seven. It's the best army we've got. Just make sure he doesn't kill you before you push that big red button. I don't want to die in battle if you're not gonna bring me back. So, how do I do this? Think happy thoughts? You're going to need this. Toei Sonic and Sad AM Sonic carry over a monitor showing a gold ring and drop it on the floor. All right, then. He rubs his hands together. Wish me luck. He starts spin dashing. He holds for dramatic effect, tension building, and dashes forward through the monitor. <laughs> Facing away from the crowd, he stands up. Slowly but surely, his body begins to change. His blue fur peels away and fades, revealing yellow underneath, as if his outer layer is disintegrating, burnt up by the energy. His fingernails poke out of his gloves, like claws. The emeralds appear and begin to float around him in a ring. He stands, fists clenched, eyes closed, his transformation complete. He is supersonic. It was all just one long dream. All of it. And now? I'm awake. He opens his eyes. We see that, in place of his pupils, there are red spirals. Are you okay? How do you feel? <laughs> oh dear. Sonic! I'm gonna have you need to go! Time. Why? What's wrong with it? Now! Good There's no time! He's like me! He can't control it! It's going to drive him insane! You have to run! 
and the world. <laughs> he holds his hand open, as if holding the world. Then he closes his fingers sharply, as if crushing it. I'll turn it inside out, yeah. He floats off the ground slowly, his toes still in contact with the floor as his heels rise up, until his feet rise completely off the ground. I'm floating around <laughs> in ecstasy. Sonic types frantically on a control panel with his arm. So... Sonic shoots forward suddenly, grabbing Sonic by the neck and lifting him up off the wall. Sonic raises his hands to his neck, suffocating. When he sings, we can see that all the teeth in Sonic's mouth are now sharp like fangs. Don't stop me now. Sonic! Don't! Sonic clenches his hand. He crushes Sonic's neck to such an extent that his head and his body fall to the wall, separated. Blood sprays from his neck. The crowd stares on in silent horror. Sonic turns his head towards them, grinning. Don't stop me! Sonic shoots forward. The crowd scatters. Cause I'm having a good time, having a good time! He shoots through the crowd like a meteor, sending Sonics in his way flying, not all of them staying in one piece. He flies up above them. I'm a shooting star leaping through the sky like a tiger. He pounces down on Dreamcast Sonic and begins mauling him, splashing blood over himself. Defying the laws of gravity. He starts running through the crowd. I'm a racing car passing by. Werehog Sonic is running away on all fours. Sonic jumps onto his back, riding him like a horse. He grabs his spikes and pulls him up. Werehog Sonic rears. Like winning a diver, I'm gonna go, go. With the first go, Sonic plunges his hand into Werehog Sonic's head. With the second, he tears out his brain whole. Then he takes a bite out and tosses it over his shoulder. There's no stopping me. Flying forward through the crowd, he first grabs OVA Sonic by the leg, then Blue Core Sonic dragging them both behind him before flying up above with them. I'm burning through the sky, yeah! On the yeah, he slams the two together, using their hands like conkers and braining them both, before dropping them back to the ground. Sonic shoots back down, grabbing modern Sonic by the neck. 200 degrees, that's when they call me Mr. Fahrenheit! Modern Sonic's face burns and melts away, like the Ark of the Covenant was opened. Sonic drops him and speeds off, flying so fast that he circles around the crowd several times. I'm traveling at the speed of light, I want to make a... He flies up above into the center and surveys the crowd, reveling in his power. Super Sonic Hedgehog of me! He flies down. Don't stop me now! In time with each word, he tears the heads off McDonald's Sonic, Sat AM Sonic, X Sonic, and Rider Sonic and tosses them into the air. He starts juggling them. I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. On having a ball, he drop kicks McDonald's Sonic's head, letting the rest fall. Don't stop me now. He shoves Boom Sonic to the floor, then spin dashes through him, cutting him in half like a buzz saw. If you wanna have a good time. He snaps one of Boom Sonic's arms off his halved corpse. It's getting cold. He holds the severed arm up to his head. It makes the call me gesture, thumb and pinky out. He throws the arm over his shoulder where it flies back and hits Lego Sonic, who falls to pieces. Sonic jumps onto Claymation Sonic, punching him repeatedly in the face. His face morphs, being made of plasticine. Cause I'm having a good time. Sonic bites down on his neck, puncturing the junk and spraying stop motion clay blood into his face. First pipe. Yeah, I'm having a good time. I don't want to stop at all. He starts flying through the crowd again, liquefying the sonics he flies through on contact. I'm a rocket ship on my way to Mars on a collision course. He uppercuts police sonic, sending him into the sky. I am a satellite. Sonic holds his own head in his hand, still grinning. I'm out of control. <laughs> He starts running around the crowd in a ring again, 
this time spiraling closer in, cornering the remaining Sonics into a circle. I'm a sex machine ready to reload, like it out above. He flies up above and holds his hand in the direction of the crowd center. About to ho, 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 explode. He creates an explosion in the middle of the crowd, sending pieces of Sonics flying in all directions. A few of the Sonics on the outskirts survive being launched forward. Sonic watches the few left, thinking up what he's going to do next. A bird through the sky, yeah. He flies down to the pre-redesigned movie Sonic and flicks off his head with one finger. With his nails, Sonic scratches down the spine in his neck, sharpening it. 200 degrees, it's when they call me Mr. Buried High. Picking up the body with one hand, he turns to instruction manual Sonic, who's backed up against a wall. Sonic aims the body at him like a dart, and then throws it, impaling him into the wall. I'm traveling at the speed of light. He runs over to British comic Sonic and kicks him down. He stands above him, the heel of his boot on his chest, his toe on the underside of his chin. I want to make a super sonic corpse out of you. Sonic is frothing at the mouth. The cosmic reset button. When you come to your senses, you have to... Sonic snaps his neck with his foot. The camera pans out to give a full sense of the aftermath. Corpses and limbs are scattered across the room, and there's blood standing almost every nook and cranny. Sonic looks over to the wall where Zonic's body is lying. He notices the control panel on his arm. We see Angel Island, a floating landmass above the ocean. Knuckles sits his back leaning up against the Master Emerald, a green gemstone as tall as him. Knuckles has one leg up. He's wearing a cowboy hat. He has earbuds in. Suddenly, Super Sonic comes by. In a streak of light, the Master Emerald is gone, and Knuckles falls backwards. Hey, get back here! In another streak of light, Sonic speeds backwards, swiping Knuckles' hat, before speeding back in the other direction. This too. Hey man, that's my hat. That's my favorite hat. We cut back to a shot of the island, which, as Sonic flies away from it, slowly falls out of the sky. After a slow descent, it crashes into the ocean, sending waves out around it. Sonic has gone from yellow to white and is flashing several different hues. He is now hypersonic. The red spirals remain in his eyes. Green Hill Zone. Day. Flying above the back of the garbage truck, Tails drops in the remains of a smashed bad neck. That's the last of them. He flies to the ground, tired out, as Coconuts jumps out of the truck. Tails dusts off his hands, and the two stand together, looking at the pile of smashed robot parts in the back of the truck. Tails looks a little troubled. Oof. I've never done it that quickly before. You want to become a full-time janitor? The pay's, uh... Well, I don't actually get paid, per se, but... Hey, coconuts? Were they like you? Huh? Tails points to the demolished badniks in the truck. Were they as cognizant as you, or did they have a lower form of sentience? Coconuts scratches the back of his hand, feeling awkward. Jeez, Tails. You don't really want to know that, do you? Answer the question! Please. Coconuts is a bit taken aback. I don't know. Does the chicken or fox or whatever inside me have a lower form of sentience than you? You know that's not the same. Why isn't it the same? Tell me. Were those robots as self-aware as you? Why does it matter? Because they're lying in front of me in a heap of shrapnel, and I need to know how I'm supposed to process that. Tails holds his hand over his mouth. He's trying very hard to keep it together. Coconuts stares at him. Man, you know a lot of words, kid. Tails looks up at him, his hand still in his mouth. Hey, come here. Coconuts hugs him. Don't worry about them. But they're like you! They're... They're, they're like me, yeah. But it's their lives of the animals, right? Tails thinks, trying to make sense of this. Come on, let's go. Do you just... Do you just ignore him? What? 
What do you mean, what? They're all dead! Yeah, I ignore it. What else am I supposed to do when the sample clears away their scrap metal? The Undertaker doesn't cry. Coconuts takes Tails' hand and leads him away from the back of the truck. They walk around the side in the direction of the front. Coconuts hears something and looks off into the horizon. He stops walking. Tails notices, looks up to him with confusion and concern, and then turns to look in the direction of what he's staring at. On the horizon is a flashing blur, getting bigger every second. Is that... I don't know. It gets closer. Coconuts takes a step forward, standing in front of Tails. Tails looks up at his back and peers around him at the approaching blur. As it gets closer, it grows faster, until it suddenly halts in front of the- Sonic! Sonic looks down at Coconuts curiously, a permanent grin plastered on his face. He's wearing Knuckles' cowboy hat. Coconuts stands his ground, protecting Tails. Sonic tilts his head to one side, then, satisfied with his examination, raises his open hand in Coconuts' direction. No! Don't! Tails steps around and gets in front of Coconuts. He raises his arms to his sides, blocking him from Sonic. Kid, don't hurt him! He's my friend! Sonic stares down at Tails, still grinning. He's really nice! He kept me company while I waited for you! You, you don't have to kill him! Tails! I don't want you to- Sonic moves his hand slightly. In a burst of light and blood, Tails is gone in an instant splattering the ground around him and Coconuts. Coconuts is paralyzed with shock. Sonic starts laughing, a giggle at first that grows louder and more maniacal. <laughs> he flies away. Coconuts falls to his knees, his mouth open, speechless. He stares down at the splatter on the ground. He turns his open hands and stares down at them. They're covered in blood. All of him is covered in blood. Uh. The camera backs away slowly as Coconut sobs. He holds his head in his hands. Uh, what? What? No. No. Oh. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No. Green Hill Zone Lake. Eggman is sitting in the Eggmobile, looking out over the water. The sparkling lake is reflected in his glasses. He notices Sonic standing behind him in his peripheral vision, arms crossed and tapping his toe, and addresses him without turning around. You kept me waiting? That's not at all like you. Sonic doesn't respond. So... You've got all seven of this universe's Chaos Emeralds. Congratulations are in order, I'm sure. Eggman turns around and begins clapping slowly and sarcastically. So what now? A forced surrender? Maybe you've been making plans with the others involving the cosmic reset button. Assuming you've been thinking that far ahead. Well, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. Sonic shoots forward hoists Eggman by the neck. I know you are, but what am I? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? That's what you sound like. I... I have the Chaos Emeralds. Thousands of them. Yeah, so I'm told. I didn't think the Conqueror of the Multiverse would be so... squishy. He tightens his grip. Eggman struggles. So where are you keeping them? Some big silo or something in your home universe? Sorry, I'm a little deaf in one ear. Could you repeat that? Sonic loosens his grip slightly. My home universe, yes. You'll find them in a storage room at my headquarters. <laughs> what, just all on the floor like Scrooge McDuck? Sonic drops Eggman to the ground. He then floats down himself until his feet are on the ground. Eggman's on his knees, holding his neck. Thank you for your time. Sonic turns around and starts walking away casually. Eggman looks up. You're... you're not going to kill me? Sonic stops. 
Oh. Wow. wow. Sonic turns around, walks back towards him. If you insist. <laughs> An establishing shot of Eggman's lair. An ominous-looking mechanical castle with a large sealed gate. Lightning strikes in the distance. Small in the frame, Sonic walks slowly up to the gate. He holds his arm up, and the gate explodes quietly, leaving a hole in his size. He lowers his arm and walks through the hole. Fortress hallway. Footsteps echo down the hall as Sonic slowly makes his way down it. As he comes to a door on his left, he kicks it down, sending it flying inward. He glances in the room. On the wall are rows and rows of what look like square safes, each with a wheel on the front, as you'd see in a bank in a movie. Sonic raises a hand, and simultaneously, all of the wheels turn, and then all of the safe doors open. Inside each cubby is a person, an animal freedom fighter, lying in a small space. It looks like a morgue. Some of them are partially roboticized with cyborg body parts. Their hands are on the end facing the doors, so we can see that their eyes are open, their mouths frozen in a pained grimace. A close-up on one face holds for a moment, before their eyes dart up to look at Sonic. They're not dead, they're paralyzed. We see the back of Sonic's head as he observes them for a moment. Then he keeps walking down the hall. He comes to another door on his right and kicks it down. Inside, Orbot and Cubot are playing cards at a table. They look up, surprised. Oh my! Are you the janitor? Does he look like the janitor? Do you look like the janitor? What does that even mean? Sonic snaps his fingers. In the room, a rectangular section of the ceiling falls down, instantly crushing and silencing the two robots. Sonic keeps walking. Another door appears on the left. Sonic kicks it in. Inside, we see a red button on a podium. Sonic walks in and stares at it. He looks up, noticing a typed sign on A4 paper on the wall behind it. It reads, Cosmic Reset Button. Do not press. That means you, Cubot. Sonic looks back down at the button. We see the button. There's a silence. From behind, we see Sonic raise his hand. It hangs in the air for a moment. Using only his wrist, Sonic moves his hand slightly to the right. The button and the podium it was sat on silently pop out of existence. From a wide-profile angle, we see Sonic lower his hand as he lets out a sigh. He turns and walks back out the door. We hear his footsteps echo as he continues down the hallway, while in the room, the A4 note flutters gently to the floor. This is what I choose. No one's going to take it back. No one's going to undo what I've done. Sonic kicks open a door. It flies off its hinges. In front of him is a large warehouse room, the floor three feet deep in Chaos Emeralds. <laughs> flies in and starts zooming around the room. The emeralds are pulled towards him, accumulating in a ring around him. The jingle tries to play, but only makes it one second in before being cut off and repeating again as he collects more emeralds. The emeralds, now broken into multiple rings, gradually form into a sphere around Sonic, until he's encased completely in a rainbow-colored twisting sphere of gemstones. They pulsate. Inside, Sonic's engagement ring shatters on his hand, and the emerald mounted in it joins the sphere. Glowing brighter and losing all their color, the emeralds spectacularly explode away from Sonic. He's now pure white, without the flashing colors of Hypersonic. Instead of spirals, his pupils are now glowing a bright yellow. His grin is gone. Sonic clenches his fists and flies straight up, piercing the roof like a he flies up and up, leaving the ground far below him. He breaks through a layer of clouds, flying up further until he's in the stars. He flies.
flies and flies, never changing direction, speeding through the galaxy. As he speeds up, the space flying by warps around him. It's as if the universe is melting, bubbling around him. Suddenly, something, somewhere, snaps. Sonic opens his eyes. He's blue again, his eyes back to normal. He's surrounded by white. Where am I? God, a slightly overweight man in a toga, with a gray neck beard and messy hair, is sat in a swivel chair at a desk in front of Sonic. God looks up from a book he was reading. Oh, you're here. Please, take a seat. Sonic looks down. There's a small plastic chair in front of him, with tennis ball slippers on its feet. Sonic looks up dubiously, then walks over and sits in the chair. Am I... in trouble? You've had quite the day, haven't you, son? Sonic stares at him. Let's take a look at your file, shall we? God picks up and opens a folder full of papers on the desk in front of him. Your background suggests a good person. Selfless, kind, always acting in the interest of the greater good. The greater good. Huh? Nothing. But, mm, today... Today was different, wasn't it? He sets the folder down on his desk. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many people you killed today? Sonic thinks about it. No. 2,733. Sonic looks at him. Huh. How many of them were real? They were all real to you, weren't they? Sonic looks away. And so, they were all real murders. They weren't premeditated. That's manslaughter, not murder. The old me in the void wasn't even on purpose. Oh, well, then we'll forget the whole thing, shall we? I'm just saying. And while we're talking technicalities, are you not going to flush me down into the eternal flames just for not believing in you? Or for being gay? Leviticus stuff? Give me some credit. I'm not the man in that book. And I'm not that cartoon hedgehog in that girl's game. Then who are you? Tell me. What? Explain yourself. Make sense of these things you've done. Please. Sonic stares at God. My name is Ogilvy. I'm 15 years old. For as long as I can remember, I fought back for freedom against Julian Robotnik. Until today. I had a bad day. That's it? You had a bad day? Yeah. You read Batman comics? I'm God. Yeah. So, do you read Batman comics? God stands up his palms on his desk. Do you feel any remorse for what you've done today? And what happens if I do? What happens if I don't? You're the one who did this to me. Was this all some test? I did this to you? Was that it? Did you just want to see what I do when you push me past my brink, when you snap me, gave me everything and took it away again? I didn't do this to you, son. The special zones and your mind did this to you. Well, you certainly didn't step in at any point. Step in? Step in and do what? Pluck you out and drop you back where you belong? Life can be hard, but it's your job to live yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, shit happens. I learned that from Bambi. But I wasn't in control today. I did things that I didn't have the power to choose, like, like in that girl's game. Somebody was pushing my buttons. Go left, go right, quote Jesus Christ verbatim. He mimes a controller. Why am I here? Where else do you have to be? What's next for you? What else do you want? I... I want to be with Mario. Huh. <laughs> God sits down. So the mass murderer's feeling sorry for himself pining for his imaginary boyfriend. Well, I'm afraid you can't have everything you want. 
Why not? Because you're not in control. I am. You play by my rules. You're not Satan. You're not the Antichrist. You're nothing but a spoiled brat. Fury builds at Sonic. He's looking away. So no matter how many rupees you collect, you don't get to go back to your fur fag fiance. Sonic's eyes shoot up. I won't let you. Sonic snaps. He jumps forward, grabbing God. He knocks him out of his chair and onto the featureless white floor. Sonic punches him viciously, over and over, pummeling his face. God bleeds. His face is bruised, misshapen, broken by the beating. Sonic continues, screaming. This is more than catharsis. This is everything he wanted. He punches and punches until the head on God's shoulders is unrecognizable. A puddle of blood flows across the floor. Sonic pants. He stares down at what he's done, exhausted. After a moment, he stands up. He moves his hand, and a portal opens up beside him. He looks at it, then looks down at his hands. His gloves are covered with blood. The cloth on the knuckles is torn. He pulls them off and drops them on the floor next to the body and walks through the portal. <coughs> Mario is walking in the door, carrying groceries in paper bags. He turns to close the door. When he turns back around, he freezes, dropping the bags to the floor. Sonic is standing in the apartment in front of him. Sonic waves, smiling nervously. If you look closely, you can see that the gloves he's wearing are now a pair of Mario's, with three points on the back. Spikes! Mario runs over and hugs him tight, crying. Sonic hugs him back. I thought I'd never... I... I... Shh. I'll never leave you again. Promise. Sonic looks at the bags on the floor. There weren't eggs in there. <laughs> Were there? Apartment. Night. Sonic and Mario lie in bed together. Mario is on his side, facing away from Sonic and asleep, while Sonic lies on his back, one hand on his chest, one by his side, his eyes open. His expression is cold. He stares up at the ceiling. I guess... I'll never know if, if this is really the world where I met Mario, or if I created it myself. He glances over at Mario beside him, then looks back up. Mario shifts. Mm, you're still awake? Yep. Go to sleep. Sonic turns over onto his side, facing away from Mario. There's a pause. He closes his eyes. After a few seconds, he opens them again. He stares at the wall in front of him. He doesn't sleep. Oh my god, what's going on? This night got fucking weird. Drove so fast, my brain got buzzed, and now I'm standing here. Met so many faces that will probably forget me. Boy, I bet I look so grown up, shirt tucked in my jeans. And now, after it all, I just really wanna call my dad. Dancing on the roof and took some girls uptown. They started fighting with my friends and I can't find them now. We 
hit some bars and saw some brawls and found a house to sleep. Forgot my retainer, could you not be mad at me? Cause now after it all, I'm just standing here to call my dad. My dad. So broke up, I wanna go home. Mm. Now I feel so broke up, I wanna go home. Now I feel so broke up, I wanna go home. Now I feel so broke up, I wanna go home. We see the front door of a house. It opens, revealing an elderly woman with glasses. She looks down. Standing in front of her on the porch is Coconuts, carrying his lunchbox. Behind is a pathway leading up to the house from a small wooden gate, with hedges on either side of it. Oh, Mr. Coconuts. Hey, Miss B. I... I got a favor to ask. Oh, of course. Anything you need. Is that quilt we made for you worn out? No, it's great. Um, uh, are you, are you familiar with the third law of robotics? Miss B looks confused. Coconuts walks down the pathway back towards the gate. He's got a new quilt wrapped around his shoulders. He turns back to wave goodbye with a smile, then walks through the fence. We see his open lunchbox, and hear coconuts struggling. He stops, and after a beat, drops a screwdriver carelessly into the lunchbox. We see him drop a piece of metal casing at his feet. We see his back. Coconuts is sat up, cross-legged, his hands in his lap, the discarded casing to his left, and the lunchbox to his right. He breathes in deep, and then moves his arms in towards himself. He breathes in again twice, pained, and then moves his arms back, breathing out. His head tilts down. After a moment, his body slumps to the left, lifeless. A tail appears from behind Coconut's body. A small fox climbs up, and perches itself on his side. It looks around curiously for a moment, before scurrying away. 